I've never seen that, but I do know they dislocate their jaw and their skin really stretches, so they can listen. They can pretty much get, big ones can eat people, so that tells you how big of stuff they can get. Plus, before they eat anything, they crush it down. They kind of tenderize it a little bit, make it a little easier too. Well, they 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 you know they kill their prey <laughs> that way. They, you yeah. Know, can you imagine having one of those wrap around you? That I don't even know why people have those things as pets. But there's people that do. Oh, they do, and that, and that was one of the one of the reasons why South Florida is now has well a living, breeding uh, stock of pythons because of that. And of course, with the hurricanes from circuses and, and zoos and stuff, they've escaped. But a lot of people they get too big and they just release them out in the wild. And you know, they they when they have uh, eggs, they give birth to many, not just one or two. And before you know it, you got they're out there breeding with each other. So now they're everywhere, and and they're eating. The, it's messing up the environment, and they're everywhere. And it, you know they'll kill, they'll eat your pets. Uh, little children is not safe sometimes out in the backyard. No, and, it, and the thing is, it, it it it's out of control. I mean that and and gators, both of them. I mean they got bounties on those things. Oh, yeah, they do. They have uh, hunting seasons, bounties, they have tournaments, all kinds of things. And, you know, it's they're still not putting a dent in that. So what's that tell you? Well, yeah, they're they're breeding and, and you know, hatching more than what they, they can, you know, get rid of. The thing is, yeah, they can't even, these some of these snakes are like 20 feet long. Yeah, they're big, you know, and, you know, a 20 foot python, it'll go about 200 pounds. That's that's a formidable foe. And the thing is. If they get around you, they're so strong, you can't, well, unless you got somebody to help you or, or some kind of knife or something, you're not getting out of that. You're you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. Well, if you live in Florida, you know, hey, uh, <laughs> this is one of the things I have to worry about. You have to worry about the sea level. You got to worry about gators. And you got to worry about snakes and spiders, let alone not the Bigfoot, but what do you call them in um, Florida? Skunk. Skunk apes. Skunk yeah. apes. Yeah, there's been reports of those lately again, too. Yeah, I just reported on one, just the last newscast. There was a sighting on January 3rd, and uh, the guy spotted one, and it was seven, eight-footer. And that, that's pretty good size. They don't supposedly get as tall in Florida, the skunk apes. But, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever been down in the Everglades and, and some of South Florida, but there's a lot of swamp and wood area that, you know, something could be out there. There's places out there I don't even think any man has ever been to. It's so secluded. I would have never had the desire to go there. <laughs> you know, I'm at the age where I, you know, why would I want to retire to a place that's going to be underwater? Well, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, most, I don't think. I know that there's no basements in Florida because for one reason you dig too deep and you're going to hit water. So that tells you that it wouldn't take much to sink that whole state. Yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to tomorrow. We're going to be talking about disclosure uh, with, with Tom Whitmore. Uh, he moved to Washington D.C. for he could actually could go and get all this, you know, p released uh, documents, and that's what he does. He studies them. And he'll be on tomorrow talking about, you know, disclosure, what's going on, uh, what he think is is going on. And I think, you know, I, I don't know what's, frankly, I don't know what's going on. I think for every little thing that comes out, there's disclosure and there's the opposite. So they, they yeah, do it right. purposely to confuse you. You're absolutely right. And that's been going on. If you really look back throughout the years, that's been going on since, Lord, the 40s and 50s, right on up through. You can you can pretty much pick any story, and then you've got the story, what somebody has reported, and then you've got what the government says, and then you've got what another group may say. So they try to blur blur the, the, the witness account or what really happened. So... It, there's disinformation, there's information, and then there's disinformation on disinformation. So they, it really gets clouded sometimes. I don't know. It, it's, it's so many things that's strange about, you know, you know UFOs and aliens, you know, and uh, back, uh, well, doing stuff like trying to, well, recreate, let's say, the uh, operating system of a UFO 
or to make one work at supposedly a crash. I, I still have my doubts about Bob Lazar. I was really, I really believed uh, Bob Lazar to recently. And some of the things he has said recently, I, I sit back and I, it, it just doesn't compute. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know much. I do remember when that first came out in 89 or 90, whenever he came out with that or sometime in that area. But, yeah, that was mind-blowing when it came out with it. Um, I do know there's some things he says that that has come to fruition. And then, like you said, there's some things that get mixed out. I don't know. It's, I guess we'll never know. I, I do. The thing is, if there was something that he legitly did see over the years, I think he's embellished it maybe um, – uh, maybe for money. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But, you know, people do have a, a tendency, you know, of embellishing things. You yeah, know, that's I, true. I, I mean, let's face it. Sometimes we will have a guest on the show and then we bring them on six months later. And haven't you noticed that all of a sudden some things majorly have changed? Yeah. And that's not to say that that what they originally did or said is not true. It's just they kind of like you're saying, embellishing a little bit, and it has changed. And I've noticed that with, with uh, several of our guests, as a matter of fact, that have come back a few times. Well, you know what? I don't want a guest to come on my show and, and tell me what he thinks I want to hear. Right. I don't, I don't right. want that. I, or what he thinks that the listenership wants to hear. I, I want him to come on, or she, and just, you know, be honest and, and tell us what happened. That's all. You yeah, know. because that's the that's the best way. Honest, just let it just be honest about it. Just say it the way it happened. You don't have to embellish anything or anything like that. And and no scripted stuff. Just improv and let it let it roll. I do not. I had another guest that wanted to come on the show, and I I said no because they sent me a whole outline of questions to ask the guests. Oh boy! And I said I don't do scripted uh, shows. Now occasionally somebody will lie to me. You know what I'm talking about. And then they come <laughs> yeah. on the show and they don't even talk about what we agree to talk about. Totally a different subject. And that upsets me bad enough. But when I get somebody that says, okay, you need to ask this question, this question, oh. this question, <laughs> and this question, okay, at these key points, you know, I said, I'm sorry, I don't do that. I'm more than happy no. to bring your guests on. He can tell their story. I'm going to ask questions because I don't know what to ask till I hear what he says. And then I'm going to ask questions that I want to know, which I know then you want to know and the rest of everybody else wants to know. That's my job. I, I, I'm pretty good at it. I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you. it's not your first rodeo. But, yeah, I know two of your pet peeves is a script and somebody trying to tell you what to do and somebody saying, yeah, we're going to talk about this and totally don't talk about it. And that's, listen, the foundation of any good show is having a, a decent guest and then just being honest and go with the flow and just improv it out. Whatever they say, you know what to ask the questions about. And what you, you ask the questions what the listener would ask if they were here and what they want to hear. Not something that's scripted that's been said, you know, on 10 other shows. That's what I don't like. And that has happened. So, I mean, it, you know, I don't, I, sometimes I just don't want to bring those type of guests on the show because if they've been doing this, uh, like the other shows, okay, and you listen to them on the other shows and they, they, you say, wow, they were on show A. They said this. Now they were on show B. They said the same thing. Now on, you know, on, on and on and on, then they're going to come on my show and they're going to say the same thing. I, it, that's not fun. It's not interesting. No, 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 I agree with you a hundred percent. And I believe me, I know you don't like that. I, um, boy, I could just see you cringing if somebody said, well, here's what you need to ask when you, boy, I, I could just see you right there. Oh, oh no, you don't say that to you. No, I, I had one or two guests, as you know. I waited to the end of the show, and then I laid into them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, the thing is, they know the deal. Like, you, you know, they, listen, just if you got something to say, just be honest about it and let it, let it come out and tell your story or your event or whatever your thing is. 
um, because and the thing is, the listeners aren't stupid. They're very intelligent listeners, and, and people aren't stupid. They can tell when somebody's trying to pull the wool over their eye, or if it's something scripted, and that it doesn't have the right feel to it. It doesn't feel legit. It doesn't feel honest or pure or organic. Well, if it sounds like somebody's reading out of a book and telling a story, that's when it, you know it's not real. Right. Ex- it should be spontaneous. If, you know, if you're talking about like when you were ghost hunting or you were, you know, about mirrors or we're talking about Ouija boards, me and you in the past, right? Mm, I'll, yeah. I'll say something, ask you questions. It's not. It's all spontaneous. And that's the way I think it should be. Not scripted. Yeah, if it's scripted, to me, anything that's scripted, it has that air about it. It's it's not as real or honest. It's kind of not saying fake so much, but it just doesn't have the same legitness to it. And and people people can read through that. Man, people aren't stupid. No, they're not. Now, I want to talk about our website. I'm going to update it tomorrow uh, with the guests for tomorrow and, you know, Friday and then Monday. I'm going to update it every, you know, where we have, because the, I only, my website's only so big. Now I can take off certain things and then I can add another person. I, I just think having three guests on at a time for, you know, three days shows at a time is more than sufficient. And, uh, you know, I, again, if you got any pictures of UFOs or cryptics and you want us to put it up on the website, you know, it's very easy. You can just go to, you know, night dreams, talk radio at gmail.com. That's night dreams, talk radio at gmail.com. Send me the picture. I'll look it over. And if I feel it, we should be able to put it up with no problem. Uh, we'll put it up on the website. And also, uh, we've got pay- PayPal there for the uh, donations you were talking about earlier. So we can, you know, don't have to charge for the past shows. Now, I don't want to have to charge. You you hit it on a nail head. You know, for the last couple of years, I haven't charged for any past shows. I've listened to so many shows. You know what? You get hooked on listening to the show, but now you want to listen to the past shows. Well, you got to pay for it. Or you have to go on some app. They want to charge you for the past show. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to charge you $5 a month or $6 a month to listen to a past show, I really feel it should be free. That's the way radio is. I mean, commercials pay for that, but I mean, you know, the the thing is, we need a little help, you know, and every year in January, I do a donation drive, and, you know, that money is used to help pay for the bandwidth, which now, with the listenership we have, I I tell you, when I I see the bills each month doing the show, I kind of get a pit in my stomach. I mean, I love the amount of listeners we have. It's a huge number now, but it costs a lot of money to do the show. It's not free. I mean, I have to subscribe to a service that feeds it out to the radio stations. I got my servers. I have, you know, my internet cost. I have all the different Skype accounts. I have all these, you know, it is all costs money. Now, I don't put, I haven't put appetite. Well, I did a couple before Christmas on the show just to see how people would react. And I honestly, when I put up a couple ads for a couple companies, people got upset. I got emails. Why are you putting advertising on your show? But I wanted to see how they would respond. Again, the show costs money to produce. So if we get a small donation of a dollar, two dollars, or if you even send 20 bucks, I'll send you, like I said, I'll send you a book. I'll pay for the shipping. The book will be either on cryptics or it'll be on UFOs. I'm sorry, that's what I got mostly of. And I got a lot of them. And I'll send it to you for free with a $20 donation. If you went to Amazon and bought that book, it's going to cost you 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. So, you you, you know, you're doing a good thing. You're helping to keep the shows free to listen to. And you're keeping freaking advertising off the Internet side. Now, I have no control what the radio stations do. They have advertising when we go to those breaks. We have advertising for my show on those breaks. But, I, you know, the agreement we have is that it doesn't go on to the Internet, just to the radio stations. Now, I could be making a lot more money by just putting those ads on the Internet, too, and charge a little bit more to the advertisers and say, hey, 
you're both on radio stations and on your uh, you're on the internet, and I guarantee they would jump on it in a heartbeat. But I'm trying to keep that part free off the show. I don't want people I have to listen to on the internet freaking commercials. 